In 2011, right when Minecraft was about to be officially launched, there was no true ending for the game. Oh sure, you could defeat the dragon, go through the portal, and carry on your merry way, but there was nothing to wrap up the game as a whole. Until author Julian Goh was hired to write the ending narrative. A narrative that is now ubiquitously called the end poem. The end poem, a seven minute narrative that occurs after you defeat the dragon and jump through the end portal, is delightfully deep and introspective. It takes the form of a conversation between two manifestations of the universe who are discussing you, the player's accomplishments, dreams, and relations to the rest of the universe. The end poem is a deeply moving piece that is now an intrinsic part of Minecraft. It has inspired thousands of people, art pieces, tattoos, and more. And it is one of my favorite pieces of writing ever. Until recently, it was assumed by most that Mojang, and by extension, Microsoft, who purchased Mojang in 2014, owned the rights to the end poem. It was assumed wrong. See, on December 7th, 2022, Julian Goh tweeted that, So 11 and a bit years ago, I wrote the only written narrative in Minecraft. Today, I'm officially liberating that ending. So what does that mean? Go published a 10,000 word post called I wrote a story for a friend that I highly recommend you read in full, but I'll summarize it and give you the spark notes. Go was contacted by Marcus Peterson, also known as Notch, to write a narrative ending for Minecraft, and was given full creative control of the narrative ending. The end poem, influenced by Go's time in game and possibly a mushroom trip, was received with rave reviews by Marcus and added into the game. It was at this point that Marcus put Go in touch with Carl, the then CEO of Mojang, to talk about payment. There's a bit of a miscommunication between Go and Carl that leaves them both irritated. Because Go is talking to Carl as an artist, in his words, as a friend, not as someone trying to broker a deal for intellectual property rights. And Carl is trying to be a proper CEO and pay for goods and services, something that Go doesn't quite realize. It's a misunderstanding that leaves them both frustrated and ends with Go leaving with a 20,000 euro payment for his time, a contract that is sent after Minecraft's release and after the poem's inclusion for the rights of the poem. A contract that, because of their miscommunication and disagreement, would go unsigned. In fact, Go didn't even look at it. The trio of Go, Marcus, and Carl part ways with a bit of a bad taste in their mouths until 2014 when Carl contacts Go again asking him to sign the contract. A contract that Go finally reads and realizes he hates. They want him to sign away full rights of the poem, which Go had explicitly said he didn't want to do, as well as sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, which if he signed meant he wouldn't be able to talk to anyone about this. Go, at this point, is slightly confused as to why they want this signed after all this time, until he starts to hear rumors of a Microsoft buyout of Mojang. A buyout that apparently can't go through until Go signs away the rights to the end poem, or the poem is simply removed for the game, which would be a tragedy. The buyout, which is for two and a half billion dollars, has absolutely no compensation for the rights of the end poem going to go. See, the profits from the sales Minecraft had already done and the two and a half billion dollars were getting spread between everyone who worked on Minecraft. Marcus and Jeb, who coded the original launch version, Daniel Rosenfeld, also known as C418, who wrote the music, and the Swiss artist Christopher Zetstrand, who did the in-game paintings. Everyone is getting paid, except for the creator of the ending narrative. Naturally, Go is pissed, and he sends a ton of emails to Marcus and Carl that go nowhere, partly because Carl thinks that Go is trying to blackmail him, and Marcus is too busy buying frivolous multi-million dollar mansions in California and being a fascist and transphobe on Twitter. But eventually, Microsoft buys Mojang, and the rights to his ending poem still reside with Julian Go. Because you see, Marcus and Carl had paid him for his time, and not for the permanent, transferable ownership of the end poem. They had repeatedly sent Go a contract, this contract, and Go had repeatedly refused to sign it. So Marcus couldn't transfer the ownership of the ending to Microsoft because he didn't own it, he just had it on loan. And Microsoft would have needed to work out a separate deal with Go or his agent, and they didn't. But at the end of it all, Microsoft buys Mojang in 2014, and things with the end poem die down for several years. 
Which brings us to around about the present day, where Go goes on what sounds like a spectacular psychedelic mushroom trip in the Netherlands, which really explains a lot about the end poem's contents, if you think about it. Uh, he has several realizations about Minecraft, Microsoft, the end poem, and decides to release it to us. In his words, from today on, you can play with it, whether privately or publicly, and nobody can stop you. Well, technically and legally, I could, because I hold the copyright, but I renounce my rights to do so. The universe wrote that ending, and the universe owns it. Which is to say that nobody owns it, and we all own it, which is to say it lives outside the way of looking at art. And so we're free to set it to music, dramatize it, animate it, mash it up with whatever you think it might go well with, whatever you're inspired to do, ideally inspired by love, but that's on you. He can do this because with Microsoft, he didn't sign a contract. He didn't give away any rights, any ownership. He's free to give it away and to tell us he's given away. He says, I think that's what the universe wants. Let a thousand flowers bloom. There's a little bit more to this story, including Microsoft stalling and suppressing any mainstream news articles on this through a process where they essentially decide to not respond to requests for comment. Not give them a no comment or send a cease and desist, but instead they just don't respond and hope to force media organizations to basically play the world's worst game of chicken where they simply don't run the story. Basically, Microsoft has enough lawyers that if a news organization doesn't get a comment from them, they can't risk running the story without getting sued. But I've linked Julian's tweets in the description explaining that. And the best way y'all can help is by spreading this story, retweeting Julian, and hey, maybe liking and commenting on this video while you're here to like the algorithm. Minecraft's end poem is one of the most moving pieces of literature I've ever read, especially when it comes at the end of a game where you've poured your heart and soul into it. It's simply a transcending experience, and one I think everybody should experience at least once, whether you beat the game on your own, or beat it with friends, or simply watch someone beat the game. If you want to see the end poem in its entirety, you can check out this video that I've linked at the end here. I would advise you to see it in game first, but if you don't want to, or you simply want to see it again, you can check this out. Folks, I've been Speaker 4. I hope you enjoyed this type of video. It's a new type of video. Uh, but be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know if you did. I hope you'll have a wonderful day, and I will catch you on the flip side. Later!